Hey, how you doing everyone? Ignite is over and we have got a roundup, so stick around. We're looking at my top 10 announcements that came out of Ignite and we're starting right now. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. If you want to master the Azure Cloud, you can start right now by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So the updates that we're going to focus on have to do with three major areas. That is the platform of Azure, management, and services. So the first thing is the Azure data centers. There are now 61 regions of Azure and, and over 170 edge sites projected into the cloud. So expansion over the globe is happening at a tremendous pace. And if you saw Project Natick, which is the undersea Azure data centers, great success story there. Go check that out. As well as number two on our top 10 list has to do with the Azure Orbital. So this is now Ground Station as a Service. So Azure Orbital is a new managed service that provides access to physical satellite communication facility. And we're gonna process that data and analyze it in Azure and take advantage of all of our ground fiber networks and connectivity that we have. And this is a new preview service that's available to select customers at the moment, but we will be ex definitely stay tuned for that. Next is Azure Resource Manager. Now this is the control management plane for all of Azure and the way that you interact with this is through your API calls, PowerShell, Azure CLI, all of those imperative and declarative processes. However, Azure really shines when you work with it using a declarative language like the Azure Resource Manager template. These templates have gone through several improvements and there are new native capabilities like deployment scripts and template specs that are coming out now as well as the next several months. So definitely stay tuned for that because infrastructure as a code is the best way to work with the cloud. So we will have some videos on this subject as well as following up with the new DevOps series that we're starting. So definitely you don't wanna miss that. So subscribe if you haven't done that already. Now with that said, I'm sure that some of you are saying, well, I don't really want to work with ARM templates because I prefer something else like Terraform or PowerShell because ARM templates really haven't been the easiest thing for everybody to work with and adopt. For me personally, it four to six months before I was really comfortable with ARM templates and they are still one of my favorite things and definitely the way I like to deploy infrastructure in the cloud. However, there is a new project. This is called Project Bicep. Now, why is it called Bicep? Well, I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming because ARM, you know, this is the ARM down here and the bicep is what powers the ARM. So that's what my conclusion is. But give me some comments down below on what you think. But bicep is the thing that helps you to construct ARM templates. So it's a little bit easier to write. There's less parameters that we have to do because we don't have all the boundaries of JSON and have to be that declarative and we can let the tools do some of the work for us. And if you're interested in us doing some videos on Bicep, give me some comments down below and we'll get into that. Next on our list is Azure Arc. Now we have done a video on Arc already, which I'll link to the video up at the top if you missed it. Azure Arc extends the management of Azure down to infrastructure or to other clouds where you can get Windows, Linux, SQL, and now Kubernetes to all run within the framework of Azure. So you have one management plane for everything. Now there are even some Arc enabled data services in preview like managed SQL instances and Postgres that you can take advantage of right now and since we are starting a data series on the Azure Academy give me some comments below if you are interested in an Azure Arc data video so halfway through the list and I want to talk for a minute about the Azure resource mover help you to move resources between Azure regions. This has never been possible before. And you can take advantage of all of the newer data centers that are gonna be coming out, as well as keeping your workloads as close to you as possible. And the beauty of this is the tool should help you to do the work. Let's check it out. So here in the Azure portal, in the search bar at the top, we'll type in mover. And at the bottom here, we can see what's going on. We're going to select the resources we want. It'll validate everything. So let's click on get started. And for my source, I'll pick the West US, and then I'll leave the destination as East US 2 and click next. Now we'll click to select our resources. And I've got just a virtual network here. So I'll click done and then hit next. 
And now we take a look at our process here. We're going to validate our resources, prepare them, do the move, and just be aware that the commit phase might result in some downtime. Depends on what you're moving and how that all works. Then you want to complete the cleanup process by deleting anything left behind in the original source region so that you're not being billed for the same thing. So we'll click proceed and in just a minute it'll be finished adding our resources and we can go to the cross regions on the left and we'll check the box for our resource and click to validate our dependencies and in the case of network some things that you want to watch out for is that there are no devices network you don't have any pairing set up or anything that has like a subnet link so we do see an issue here that we have to validate our dependency we can do by clicking to add a dependency it happens to be our resource group and i'll move that as well now we've got our resource group and our network, which we will validate one more time. And with that, the preparation step is next. So we'll click that. Everything's been validated and prepared. Now the next step is to initiate the move. Just click initiate and then Azure will take care of the rest. Now, once you have the commit move pending, I want to take a look at the resource groups. We've got two here that are tagged with US2. So if I click on the first one, this resource group is for the Azure resource mover, just to get everything situated. The second one has to do with where our virtual network is going to be located. And if we were to take a look at the virtual network, everything about it is identical to the resource that we had in the other region. I've got the same configuration for my subnets and my address space. And if we look at the deployments that was done here, there is an ARM template, which basically copied and pasted exported ARM from my previous resource group to deploy it in this one. The next feature is the Azure VMware service. This is a brand new service that's native to Azure that's partnershiped with VMware and it is available now in many regions. This is a continuing effort to give customers more flexibility with their VMware solutions and integrate them directly into Azure. And of course, you could still use things like Azure Migrate or the VMware HCX to get things up into the cloud. So if you're interested in us doing some VMware service videos, give me some comments down below and we'll take a look at doing that. Next is a solution around servers called Azure Auto Manage. And this tool should help to significantly reduce the day-by-day -day management tasks and automations for the lifecycle of your Windows servers. And this will onboard your VMs to services like Azure Security Center, Azure Backup, Azure Site Recovery. The configuration drifts from what your standard is. Azure Auto Manage will help bring you. So in the Azure portal, we'll click to enable and you start by selecting the VMs you want to onboard. Then you browse the services that you want for your configuration. You can even create new preference sets for that and then onboard them to the appropriate services and then hit the select button and then click enable. So if you're interested in more on Azure Auto Manage, comment down below and we'll get to work. Another feature that's made its way into Azure is the Azure Backup Center. Now I was presenting on Ignite, I think it was two years ago when the Backup Center was first publicly announced. Now, here it is. So the Backup Center allows you to take all of your Azure Backup Recovery Services vaults from all over the place, different region descriptions, etc., and view everything and control it from one place. So that would be things like triggering backups from one location to anything, anywhere, even across Azure tenants. And this is support for your virtual machine, SQL, Postgres, Azure Files, SAP HANA, and every workload that Azure Backup supports. Again, if you're interested, comment below, let me know. And for the last section of things, this is around Windows Virtual Desktop. Of course, you know, I couldn't let that out. That means that I want to remind you that we have another channel that is called Desktops in the Cloud. So if you're not subscribed to that, but if you're interested in WB, and that's with my good friend Christian Brinkhoff, where we try to bring in people from the community as well as from Microsoft, to give you all the best information on what's going on in the W service. And the first announcement is that Microsoft Endpoint Manager is going to be supporting WVD. There are many new regions that the WVD services calls home. And now with these new gateways closer to you, you'll be able to get even lower latency connecting to the WVD service. There's integration into Azure Monitor that if you had seen our previous video on the Monitor Workbook, you already know about it. So go check it out up there if you missed it. This is a native solution in the Azure Monitor where we use something called a workbook to help you understand queries around WVD monitoring, as well as give you some dashboards to help you manage the service more easily. 
And speaking of management, of course, we have a scale automation tool that you can use to control your costs. But there is a new feature that is called Start VM on Connect, which Peter Wigleven showed us in the Desktops on the Cloud's latest episode. And that allows you to leave your VMs off and then turn them on when you need them. And the one I'm probably most excited about is MSIX App Attach. We're going to call the WVD Admin Portal home very, very soon. And we will definitely have a video on that. That's it, my top 10 list for all of the coolest stuff that I thought Knight had to offer. Who had something that you were interested in that I didn't call out? Please give me some comments down below because I might have missed it too. And that way we can all learn together. And I hope you like this new format. My new office isn't quite finished yet. Had some delays with the desk and getting things up on the walls that now we've got all painted. So there will be a new office video coming as soon as I can. So subscribe so you don't miss that one and click that notification bell. And if you want to keep on learning in the meantime, over at the top, you can see our latest video and at the bottom and the one that those devious YouTube machine learning overlords have picked out just for you. And we want you to keep on learning about Azure. Thanks very much for joining us and we will catch you in our next video. Happy learning.